he dressed up. <laughs> he dressed up for the show. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> oh, I didn't wish my mother a happy Mother's Day this year. I have only recently started speaking to her again after 15 years. She was born and raised in New Jersey, one of eight children. She raised me to stay in New Jersey as the oldest of three. I know everyone's parents do a shit job. <laughs> We're only human. I know that most people do the best they can. I feel it would be unnecessary of me as a middle-aged man to enumerate here the stings of childhood as if they were fresh traumas. They're immaterial. I mainly knew my mother as a miserable woman who was only happy if other people were as miserable as she was. She felt trapped in a loveless marriage and had gone to college to be a teacher only to end up a janitor. I just want you to be happy is a cliche I often heard, but happiness on someone else's terms is misery made to look acceptable. I figured out much later that she must have suffered from depression. My mother was a very contradictory person. She was pro-choice, but hated feminists. She mocked her sister's religiosity, but insisted her children go to church every Sunday. She bragged when I became a Sunday school teacher at 12, but when I grew into a hardline right-wing Christian in college, she tried to get the church I joined to shut down as a cult. <laughs> I was a self-righteous prick mired in a hyper-religious worldview that left no room for compromise or the existence of moral gray areas. I was insufferable to the people who knew me best. I'm sure if I were still living in New Jersey, I'd be one of those smug white evangelicals wearing a MAGA hat and a giant cross, as if those weren't contradictory symbols. <laughs> or I would have killed myself 14 and a half years ago. I had tried twice before realizing I could simply get the hell out of New Jersey. <laughs> when I moved to the Midwest, I cut off all ties to family members and stopped speaking to every last one of them. The reason that I started speaking to my mother again is because I learned through a cousin on social media that she was diagnosed with cancer. She would object to me telling a group of strangers, but I don't care what she thinks, and I come off worse in this story. I have wanted her to die. I have pictured the relief that I would feel upon hearing the news for the last 15 years, I have felt an ever-present shadow, a fear of her intruding into my life to undermine my happiness. But I did not want her to be in pain. I know what cancer and chemotherapy and radiation treatments can do to people. I have helped friends set up crowdfunding campaigns for medical care. I have heard stories about personality changes and weeks of immobility from people who have lost loved ones. I have had to accompany friends to and from hospitals as their bodies betrayed them and they wasted away. Originally, I called her to simply express sorrow and sympathy. I half expected her to blame me for her illness as she had when she had developed a thyroid condition. Supposedly, it was the result of stress I had put her under by joining a cult. <laughs> or as my father had put it, I hope you feel guilty as hell about this. <laughs> that was one of the last conversations I had with both of them. Thankfully, she did not say her cancer was my fault in our first conversation after more than a decade and a half. I thought after all that time, and with everything that had happened, maybe she had changed. She wished me a happy birthday, even though my birthday is in August, 
and ask, when did my children get so old? We have spoken several times since. Hearing her voice and what she had to say caused me so much unrest that my husband said it might be better if I not call her again. I continued because part of me wanted her to know her own culpability and why I hadn't spoken to her for so long. I didn't want her to die thinking she was blameless. But what purpose would that serve? What would that accomplish? She might have bragged about how the chemo hasn't affected her hair, which was an early bit of optimism since made untrue. And she may have made predictions about remission that give her the hope she needs to continue. She thinks she could live another 18 years, which will put her well into her 80s, and we should all be so lucky. Yesterday, she went into the hospital and is going to stay there for a couple of weeks for a stem cell treatment. She may never suffer the way I have seen others suffer or the way I assumed she would suffer. She did say her bones hurt worse than the pain of having three children. But how would it help for me to articulate my perspective on events that she never remembered clearly in the first place? As much as I think of her as the deeply unhappy woman who gave birth to me, I know she's a sick old woman facing her own mortality. In a later conversation, she answered the phone, Hello, my son. I wanted to tell her that her son is dead. I wanted to say the son she thought she had was a person who had never existed. Then she had a coughing fit, and I lost my nerve. Does that make me a coward? A hypocrite? I'll probably think of myself that way for the rest of my life. But I know it wouldn't have helped the situation if I told her those things. Even if I'd felt better saying them, it's not like she would have had a positive reaction. And then what? Would I have explained to her what I meant? Would she have ever understood? I did tell her I'm not the same person, though I did not have time to articulate the number of ways that's true. I know I'm less hateful, less arrogant, have a better perspective and better priorities. She said, you always take everything too seriously. She's right and wrong about that. The things I take seriously now are things that matter. Instead of worrying about an imminent apocalypse from the book of Revelation, I'm worried about the one that will be wrought by climate change. Instead of viewing homosexuality as a sin that will incur judgment, I've been happily married to a man for two years. Instead of picketing abortion clinics, I'm a firm supporter of Planned Parenthood and a woman's right to bodily autonomy. My mother might be surprised at what we agree on now. I thought I would be free from her, either in death or closure. I have realized how much better off I am now as a person than I was the last time I spoke to her. In exploring my bitterness towards her, I have become free from myself. Thank you.